What's up everyone and welcome back to episode 19 of our programming series where we create a forum with PHP. In the last episode we learned about all of um, using functions PHP, we learned about how to do multiple parameter functions and how to use return values with our functions. That was pretty easy and we're not even talking about that this episode which is good. We are going to be talking all about um, MySQL. Um, what is it? My what? What do we call this? Um, using running MySQL queries with PHP. So if we hop into our MySQL, um, you know PHP admin. If we go to SQL, you know you can run SQL queries. You can just run select asterisk from. You know, just, you know that works fine. Just run that. And go. Boom. Um. Oh, oh no, we can't because we have to go into our forum because I'm a scrub and then you can run that query. So you just do, uh, where is it? Yep. Select asterisk from users. And if we just click that and go, we will see that our query will just bring out absolutely everything that we have on the in our database. But what if we actually want to display this content on the web page, you know, on our PHP without having to, so if you want to see someone's profile, you don't have to log into the database and then check out everyone's profile at once. You can just see it with PHP. Well, to, that's what we're going to be learning about in this tutorial. We're going to be learning about connecting with PHP through MySQL. I mean, <laughs> other way around. Connecting with MySQL through PHP. Complete and total difference. So... In order to do this, we need to go ahead and we're going to create a new file. So right click on our, not images, right click on our forum folder and click on new file. And just push control S and we are going to save this file as connection.php. And boom, you get this file. Now inside here, we need to, of course, just put our PHP blocks. Question, question, PHP, oh, not phop. There we go. And now inside here, you need to, the first thing we need to do is we need to give the location of our server. And now for some people, your server may be located on some IP address or something, um, or some website that's not yours. You know, maybe you have your databases and all that on some other website. But for us, our server is located on the local host. So to do this, put a, we're gonna make a new variable. We're just gonna call it host. We're gonna set it equal just to, localhost. Super easy. Now, we need to give the username and password of our database because we learned that to view the data and to run queries and stuff, we had to go to PHP My Admin, then we had to sign in with our username and password. So we had to, you know, go to localhost and sign in. Well, we need PHP to do exactly what we do. We need PHP to navigate to localhost and then we needed to sign in with the username and password. So, go ahead and write in here. You want to write in username equals and now my username was fox you can put in whatever yours was if you don't if you didn't make a, a username you can just put root and you can and now you need a password you can set that equal to nothing uh, but I used fox and ASDF so fox and password equals ASDF and boom now we need to actually do something with this data so welcome to MySQLi. I don't know what the I stands for, but that's not important. So, MySQLi is sort of this, um, it's this, it's, I think it's part of PHP, I don't know if it's like some kind of API or something, I really don't know what it is, I just know how to use it, but what it does is it lets us use and execute MySQL, um, queries and functions with PHP, um, and that's pretty cool, so yeah. It's, um, some people may like to use POD, and, you know, Laravel has a lot of good stuff built into it, and all these sort of modern APIs, but I'm teaching you guys from scratch, so you get all the basic concepts you could ever need, and so you actually understand everything you do. So, in, on, um, after you've typed your, after you've typed your host, your username and password, it's time to connect to our database. So to do that, make a new variable called connection and set it equal to a function. This variable is going to be equal to a function like we were in the last video. 
And now this is going to be equal to the function minus QLI, don't use minus QL underscore, minus QLI underscore connect, and minus QL is deprecated. Minus QLI is standard deprecated, means it's out of date, no one uses it, it's sort of not the standard anymore. So use minus QLI underscore connect. And now inside here, we need to give it three values. We need to give it the host that we want it to connect to. So we want it to connect to localhost. Now we need to give it a username and password to use. So username and dollar sign password. And now technically, you don't need to make variables for all these. You could just put in, you know, your actual username and password and all that in raw data. But I just find it easier to do to do it like this. So I mean, obviously, you could do. Oh, Oh gosh, you could do, you know, localhost, and then your actual username and password, but we're just, I just like to make variables for it. So yeah, that's not important, but whatever. So now, we have this connection variable, we need to actually start doing something with it. So, if we, we could say if, and now we're going to check to make sure the connection isn't broken. So we're going to say if dollar sign, or we're going to say if is set dollar sign connection or we're gonna say if it's not set so you know if I set equals false or if exclamation point I set we're going to echo um, a new function mysql mysql e underscore e -roar. I think that's how you do it I don't, know, I don't know if you need the connection. I doubt you need it. So that's, so we're just going to make sure the connection works. There's a few different ways to do that. But yeah, we're just going to rack you out this MySQL connect. Uh, or we're not even going to echo it out. We're just going to run that. And we are going to, now we need to select the database. So we've connected to the server. We've made, oh, we need, oh, we also need to kill the page. So die. So inside there. So now we have tested if, um, or we have, We've connected to our server with our username and password. We tested to make sure that it actually worked. If it didn't, it's going to echo out some kind of error and it's going to kill the page. Now, we need to tell it exactly what database we want. Because if we're in phpMyAdmin and uh, I just click on SQL and, you know, I try to run a query, it's not going to know which database to pull from. It could say, well, there's no users table in this MySQL database or this information schema database. I don't know which one to use. I mean, you could probably use a dot, a dot separator or something, but we need to tell it exactly what database to use. And to do that, we need to call the function mysqle underscore select underscore db. Inside our parentheses, we need to call dollar sign connection, comma. And now inside of these quotes, we could actually, I mean, we could make a variable. We'll just do that because to stay consistent. Database, and we'll set that equal to... Um, our database was called forum. Inside of phpMyAdmin, we have a database called forum right here. So we're going to set our database there to forum. So, then dollar sign database. So there you go. And now, let's just see if this works. So we are going to call print underscore r. And now we're going to echo, or not echo, we're going to print out the connection variable just to see if it's working. And if it isn't working, uh, we shouldn't get anything. But if it is working, we should get something to go to your connection.php, forum slash connection.php. Go here. Boom. We get a bunch of random data, which means it's working. If I change the password to some, if I take this out and make the password wrong, <coughs> we get errors everywhere, which is good. Because obviously the password isn't, yep, there you go. So there's that. Um, which works just fine. Okay, so now we need to go on to actually getting some data from our page. So go and fix your password. We could actually add some kind of check and stuff to make sure that our password was correct, and I guess we'll work on that more in the ep last next episode. I just want to let you guys sort of understand the getting data from our database. So I fixed it, refresh. We should just get all this... Oh, what happened here? ASDF. Come on, man. Okay. So, before our MySQL, or before our PHP tags, go ahead and write in pre-tags. And now you guys probably remember what those do. They fix print R and, um, you know, sort of help us to format 
And we're just going to be doing that because we're going to, we're not actually going to generate a table in this episode. We'll probably do that in the next episode or something. So if we, yeah, there you go. Now you can actually read it. That's good. But we are going to use print R one more time in this video. So I'm just going to delete this because we don't really need to know this information. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put this user's table that we have in here. We're going to splat this user's table just on the screen right here. So to do that, we need an SQL query. So if you guys remember our SQL query tutorial, you know our query was select asterisk from users. And we need to run that with PHP. So to write that query, make a new variable called SQL, set it equal to set it equal to um, select select asterisk from put our um, raves users where well you don't even need it where we can just say select asterisk from users there we go and now we need to query this we need to actually send it to the database and we we don't we could just run mysql underscore query and the query function is what lets us actually query things and of course we need to give it two parameters the first one is our connection so dollar sign connection and then dollar sign sql to run that but if we do this uh, we shouldn't get any errors absolutely nothing happens though so we need to figure out a way to print this out on the screen so to do that we need to set this equal to a variable so we need to say dollar sign result equals mysql query and this result is going to be equal to whatever mysql returns so when we run this code obviously it's going to return that big table well we're going to set that result variable to that big table and now we just need to add one more thing so the next function doesn't flip out and that's just or die and what this means is if this command fails and the query fails kill the page so that way nothing else happens so if the you know if this if this fails die so that is so that's our variable result and now we need to actually run that so what we're going to say the first thing we need to check is we need to see how many rows we have and we need to see if we have more than zero rows because if we don't have more than zero rows we don't want to echo anything to the screen because then we have no users so to do that to check that we need to say if um and we need to say if mysqle we're going to run a new function mysqle underscore num underscore rows parentheses equals zero or no is greater than zero so we're going to see if the amount of rows in this table is greater than zero what we um we need to actually give it a variable and the variable we need to give it is result so we're going to run this query right here we're going to run this query and this function is going to tell us how many rows there are if there are more than zero rows we want to we're going to create a while loop and now this is super confusing and it's kind of it's not important why we need a while while loop but think of it as kind of i talked to you guys about for each it's kind of like that but we are going to call another function we're calling so many functions this one is mysqle underscore fetch i'll go over all this in a second asoc and now what this is going to do is it's going to return this table as an array so it's going to take this table and just turn it into an array so we can use that so instead of here we just need results and now inside here we just need to print out the array we get so we're gonna oh we actually need to set the sql to variable so we're gonna say dollar sign um users equals mysql underscore fetch a sock and we're going to say print underscore r and then dollar sign users okay that is a lot of code to type and i hope you guys have followed along i'm go i'm about to explain it so save this and if we go back to our thing we run it it should boom we get array and we get of course id1 username equals captain falcon show me a moves captain at falcon.com his age is 46 there you go dr mario pills Dr. Mario at Nintendo.com, age 25. Perfect. So this is all just working out perfectly. If it isn't working perfectly, follow this code exactly, um, and try to fix your code. Don't just copy paste or don't just copy, you know, letter from like, character character. Try to fix yours, 
And now I'm going to explain all this code. So the first thing we do is we connect to our database with our username and password. The next thing we do is this is kind of broken, but I'm going to fix it um, and I'm going to look into it. But what it does, it's kind of broken because of the whole displaying errors thing. It checks to see if we're able to connect to our database or not. If not, it's going to echo out, you know, you can't connect to the database, database problems, um, and all that. The last thing is going to, it's going to choose the database, which is, of course, our forum database. So that way we know exactly what we're going to query. We're going to know what we're going to send our SQL queries to. So it, it chooses our database. The next thing we want to do is we want to write a query. And this query is going to get all of the user data. So this this query is, of course, something we just write in PHP MyAdmin, which is select asterisk from users, which is going to get everything. The next one is result. And now what result is, is it is basically whatever we get from this query. So it's going to take, you know, whatever, whatever my SQL returns and just throw it into this result variable. And now we're going to see how many rows did we get from our result? Like, you know, does our table have any rows? If our, if our table has some rows, you know, if our table's rows are more than zero, you know, we have some rows. So what we want to say is while um, this users, so, you know, while we still have some data, from, or we're going to say while we're going to create a new variable called users and we're going to set it equal to just grab all the data so we're just going to loop through all this data and just set it equal to this users um, value now we're just going to print out the users array and it should just look like this if it looks all wonky remember to add these pre tags but yeah that's pretty much how it works if you have any questions or you want me to cover anything in the in the next tutorial that you're confuzzled about let me know in the comment section below. If you've learned absolutely nothing and you hate this video, dislike it with all your passion. Um, if you are if you're loving the series and you want to learn more, go ahead and like the video. Um, comment on me about it. Um, subscribe for more content and follow me on Twitter. Till next time, I'll see you guys later. Hey guys, uh, one more quick thing that I forgot to mention. So if we end up... Um, I had this function here that was completely wrong well about the sort of testing I just forgot about something well to actually test to make sure that the users are able to connect to our website we just run this um we can run a simple check that kills the website if if we're not able to connect so I put in the wrong username so say if then we want to test if there's a mysql underscore connect underscore error there we go. So if we if we have a MySQL connection error, what we want to do is we want to die. And now inside of die, you can put these quotation marks. I forgot about this. I had done it in the previous forum that I made, and I just didn't think about it. Well, you can put in die, and we can actually give it something to echo out. So we'll say unable, unable to connect to the database. Come back later. And of course we can save that and if we go to our website here and refresh the page we should see yep um, we get this error because I obviously renamed it wrong but um I will you know go back and we'll cover I guess error reporting and all that later on but um yeah if if there's at any point you can't connect to the database you just run this code so I hope you guys have not hated the tutorial insert outro here see you guys next time